What to photograph in September 2023? Hello, Photopillar Rafael, the bar here. In September, we'll enjoy the Zodiac Light. And yes, yeah, September is a great month to photograph the Zodiac Light. Very cool. And of course, we also have the Milky Way and the Galactic Center and the crescent moon and the full moon and four conjunctions of the moon with the planets with jupiter mercury mars and saturn also neptune will be at opposition it's when the planet is closest to earth giving us a great opportunity to view and photograph the planet of course using a telescope mercury will be at its greatest western elongation giving us a great opportunity to view and photograph the planet Ah, and as always, don't forget the early zone for opportunities. I'm talking about the sunrises, sunsets, golden hour, blue hours, star trails. Also, at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you three of the best photos that you guys have submitted to the Photobills Awards and that have been featured in August. So let your imagination fly. Decide what you want to photograph and go to Photobills and plan it. This way, you'll be able to go and capture it. Okay, let's get started with some of the best for opportunities that can be captured in September 2023. Let's go! The new moon is on September 15th, and around new moon is a great time to photograph the zodiacal light. The zodiacal light is the reflection produced by the scattering of sunlight to the particles that are moving along the entire solar system. At this time of the year, in the northern hemisphere, the zodiacal light is visible due to the east before the astronomical twilight begins, before dawn, and it's visible in the sunrise direction, the direction of the thick yellow line that you see on the map. On the contrary, in the southern hemisphere, the zodiacal light is visible due west, just after the astronomical twilight ends, and it's gonna be, you're gonna find it in the direction of sunset, which is the direction of this thick orange line you see on the map. You can miss it. And if you wish to learn how to photograph the zodiacal light, why is this video? September is a fantastic month to photograph the Milky Way and the Galactic Center, center completely vertical. In the Southern Hemisphere, you can get it low in the sky too. For example, in the Northern Hemisphere, and I have the red pin in Spontan Gill, uh, and you see that the Milky Way is completely vertical with the natural arch. It's a great month. September is a great month to photograph Milky Way completely uh, vertical. Check the top panel, you clearly see the Milky Way completely vertical. And if I tap on the night AR uh, button, I'll be able to visualize the Milky Way here, have the horizon. Milky Way Center, Galactic Center, and the Milky Way is co completely, completely uh, vertical. Pretty cool. Actually, the plan you've seen now, uh, you're seeing now, is uh, a plan uh, that belongs to this photo that was taken by Antonio Claudel in Spondangil. And you clearly see how the Milky Way is completely vertical with the beautiful na na natural arch. Now, if I go to the Southern Hemisphere, to Argentina, for example, you see that you can get the Milky Way very vertical, but pretty horizontal too, and a beautiful panorama. And as you see, the Galactic Center, which is the white, uh, largest dot on the Milky Way arch, is pretty high in the sky, it's pretty centered in the Milky Way arch. Let's check the night AR and see here at the horizon, we have the panorama of the Milky Way and the Galactic Center here, pretty high in the sky. Very, very cool. I love photographing the Milky Way in the Southern Hemisphere. And by the way, if you still learn how to plan the Milky Way, why is this video? One or two days before or after the new moon, are great days to photograph the moon when it's super thin, with a phase between 1 and 2%. For instance, check the plan I have here. I've just planned a cool photo of the crescent moon, should spot the wrapping position, and the crescent moon is aligned with the uh, lighthouse of Artruch in Menorca. And the diameter of the moon will be 11 meters, which is pretty big. And the moon height is going to be, according to the panel, 20, uh, 34 meters more or less the height of the lighthouse so i've planned the crescent moon aligned with this beautiful lighthouse here and the natural light is gonna be uh, after blue hour but because the the lighthouse is lit at night i can get in one single exposure both the moon the crescent moon the thin moon and the lighthouse very cool guys i know that you love photographing the full moon but i invite you to start exploring to plan and photograph the castle moon because you're gonna get amazing results and if you still learn how to plan and photograph the castle moon watch this video the full moon is on september 29th and the full moon is also a great opportunity to work with the moon to create amazing stories 
The moon is such a great storytelling element in our compositions. So, based on the moon rise direction and the moon set direction, this thick blue line you see in the map, plan your shot. Find the subject that can be aligned with the full moon. For instance, remember the, the shot I've just planned with the crescent moon? Well, I planned the same shot but with the full moon, because in September we can photograph both the crescent moon and the full moon aligned with the lighthouse of Artrouge, which is great. So, if on uh, September 29th, 2023 at 7, 16 a.m. I am at the red pin position, I'm going to be able to photograph the full moon aligned with the top of the lighthouse of Artrouge, and let's check the natural light. Natural light is going to be uh, golden uh, blue hour, blue hour, because the elevation of the sun, as you see on the top panel, the elevation of the sun is minus 5.04, which is blue hour. Remember that the blue hour is uh, when the sun is between minus 4 and minus 6 degrees, and golden hours when the sun is between 6 and minus 4 degrees of elevation. Amazing, an amazing shot, a big moon, the moon is going to be, I checked the size in brackets, 12.4 meters, and the height of the moon is going to be 23 meters, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's a great shot, a great plan with the lighthouse. So if you're in Menorca, you have two shots this month with the moon and the Artrouge lighthouse. Go for them. And again, you wish to learn how to plan your moon photos, watch this video. In September, there will be four moon planning conjunctions. On September 4th, Jupiter will be pretty close to a pretty large moon. The moon phase will be 71%. On September 13th, Mercury will be in conjunction with the moon and the moon phase will be 1.3%. Pretty thin. On September 16th, it's Mars that will be in conjunction with a pretty thin moon. Again, with a phase of 2%, 2.8%. And on September 27th, the moon will be pretty large, the moon phase will be 92%, and the moon will be in conjunction with Saturn. In both hemispheres, you'll find the moon planet conjunctions in the direction of the moon rise or set, actually, in the direction of the thin line you see moving on the map that represents where the moon is at all time. Where you see the moon, you'll see the planet. So you want to plan your moon planet conjunction line with an interesting subject, use it, use this uh, thin moon to know where the moon is gonna be, so you know where the planet is going to be too, and you can plan your shot. On September 19th, Neptune will be at opposition, meaning that the Earth will be between the Sun and the planet, meaning that the visible phase of Neptune will be completely illuminated by the Sun, and the magnitude of Neptune will be 7.8. The planet is brighter than any other date uh, of the year, and it's visible throughout the night. So this is the best time to uh, view and photograph the planet Neptune but you're gonna need a telescope. Because remember that only celestial bodies that are, have a magnitude under 6 are visible at the naked eye. In the evening, Neptune will rise in the east in the direction of the sunrise, the thick orange line you see on the map. More or less over there you'll see Neptune. And on September 22nd, Mercury will be at its greatest western elongation, which means that the planet will be further away from the Sun, giving us great conditions to view and photograph the planet from both hemispheres. Mercury will shine in the early evening sky with a magnitude of minus 0.5, visible to the naked eye. After sunset, you'll find it low in the sky in the direction of sunset, the thick orange line you see on the map, so you can't miss it. Okay, and now let's see some of the best photos that you submitted to the Photopos Awards and that we featured in August. The first one is a fantastic photo of a silhouette against the Milky Way in Arches National Park, USA, a photo by Edith Dono. The second one is a photo of the 97.3% waxing Gibius moon perfectly aligned with the Space Needle in Seattle, USA, photo taken by Sigma Sandra Han. And the third one is a spectacular photo of Trecime di Lavaredo under the golden light in the Italian Dolomites, photo taken by Stefano Bolli. Fantastic photo, guys! Fantastic photos! And now you to learn how to plan and photograph all the events I've shared with you in this video. I invite you to download and study well our super detailed astronomical events photography guide. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and in the photos comment below. Download it! And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember, they have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot. Legendary photos. Bye.